Hello everybody, in this video I'm going to show you how to connect the Eufy Floodlight Cam 2 Pro to a NAS device such as the QNAP TS431P. So let's get started. Start your Eufy mobile app and then go to settings. Once you're in settings, just scroll down to the general section and you'll see all the different options available for storage. So go to local storage. This is the, how much I'm currently using, but I don't want to use that. I want to use the NAS. So tap on NAS, just go next, next. Just have to make sure you have a static IP address assigned on the floodlight camera. So just uh, say that you have, and now enable it. Now that it's enabled, you'll be able to see the username and password. You can change it if you want or just leave it as the default. And tap OK. So these are the settings that is going to be configured on the floodlight camera. These are the RTSP settings. So we look at that later on. Just make sure that all these settings are captured. You might want to write it down or you just copy it. So the RTSP link. You can copy the link and I'm going to use VLC to just test it. So just paste that link and see if whether it works. And there you go. So you're able to see what's currently being streamed from the UFI floodlight. I'm going to use on my NAS. There's a surveillance app that you can install on the QNAP. So that's the one I'm going to use. So just let it install and then we'll configure it and test it. Okay, once it's installed, just open it up. Just need to enter your username and password so just put that in with the same password to connect to your QNAP device okay now we're just gonna set up which volume on the NAS it's gonna store the videos so pick the biggest one so I've picked one that has about 500 gig free space. Just let it apply the settings. Might just take a little while, but just let it run. Once that's done, you go to the camera configuration to add one of the camera. Now with the QNAP device, yeah, the surveillance app only allows you to have two cameras for the free license. If you need to upgrade that, there's additional costs. So if you've got more than one camera, you might want to look at it using another app and just store the files onto the NAS. But I'm gonna go through and just configure the cameras. Okay, so click on add, and then don't worry about searching for it. We have to manually add it. Scroll through and select gen gen generic model. And for the camera, just put generic RTSP. Now for the URL, you gotta put live zero and the camera name, just give it any name. Then add the IP address, should be the same that was configured on the app. And then put the username and password. Port should be the default. And then just click on test. Now if it works, that's great. If it worked, you'll see that checkbox and a tick. There you go. So now click on, click on next. You can change the resolution if you want, but just uh, take all defaults and just go next. Select all these options and go next. You can select when to set the schedule. It's going to take all the defaults and go next. I just wait until the camera has been added. So okay, we're adding so it now it's been into added. the channel one. Just finish this and then you can click on the top button here. You can actually view and monitor or you can do a playback. In order to use any of these two options, you have to install the app called Qmon. Let me just download this Qmon app, just save it and then just install it. All you have to do now is just run the app. So let's install it. 
and here we go it's just running in the background and it's installing just let it run take all the defaults and here we go it's finished installing so let's launch the Qmon app and see what happens let's close this down click on monitor and here we go so this is the Qmon app and as you can see I've blurred the actual footage but you can see that it's actually capturing the streaming video from the UFI camera you do have the options to change the different settings on this if you wanted to let's go and test the playback so the playback allows you to go through some of the saved footage and just preview it so you can go back and see what happened the other thing that the UFI does is that you can create events so it only stores events that triggers so motion it has facial recognition but you will need by a UFI home base so it currently has facial detection so it can detect whether there's a face or not but if you want to set up facial recognition to determine if, you know who's who then you need to buy a license or you need to buy the home base so that's pretty much it now it's all configured you can go and see where the video is stored so I'm going to go through the NAS and check the actual files and those were the files that were stored if this video helped you in any way please give it a like and subscribe to the channel